Here we are looking at our Lich build today. This is a dot and rot build based primarily around Ghost Flame and Aura of Decay. Aura of Decay is providing us with lots and lots of poisons and lots of poison damage. And then Ghost Flame is providing us with bleeds and movement and a ton of survivability. Um, this character is running his first empowered monolith, and so hasn't done these yet, just been leveling him up, so he is level 80 right now. And uh, playstyle is pretty straightforward. You use Ghost Flame to do damage, you use Spirit Plague to debuff the targets and start spreading damage around, and then you move into him and let Aura of Decay rock them away. AoE clear is phenomenal. Single target here is pretty solid for a dot and rot build. And we maintain our mana by not channeling Ghost Flame randomly as we're running around the map. And with uh, mana on potion use, experimental aspects on our belt, as well as marrow shards can proc mana, and things that Spirit Plague kills can proc mana. And so lots of little different ways to maintain this really high mana cost on Ghost Flame. Now when we are in Ghost Flame, we are sitting at 80% dodge. And so that makes a huge difference to our survivability. And we're maintaining up to 5k-ish ward as we're running around. And that will again scale as we scale our character up. As you can see, we fly through the entire monolith very easy without any difficulty at all. And let's go ahead and switch over and take a look at our build guide. All right, here is our build planner for the Lich. From an item standpoint, you're going to be looking for a Bone Clamor Barbute, a Bone Amulet with damage while channeling and damage over time, ideally health and stun avoidance. And I have fire resist on here, but it could be whatever resist you're missing. Down here, we have Necropolis Plate with plus four level to reperform as well as 85 health. Uh, we want int health and increased health on our body armor. We are using a spine of Malatros. Until you get a spine of Malatros, you can use a plague bearer staff. If you don't have a plague bearer staff, you can use any old weapon that has increased poison damage on it or poison penetration or damage over time. Um, these, this is a flexible slot until you get it, but ideally we will want a Spine of Malatros and we want to slam a T5, T6, T7, increased damage over time or increased poison damage into this weapon. Obviously the cathodic fissure aspect of the weapon we're not using, but all of the levels to our abilities are huge. You want a plus three to acolyte skills and a three damage over time. We don't care about fire skills. So it's, it is important that you get a three damage over time and a three acolyte skill spine of Malatros once you have access to them. Down here in our ring slots, we want to use ivory rings, ideally with T7 and increased damage over time, health, and then any of your missing resistances. I've got lightning resist here and slam the T1 void resist on there. Over here, we've got void resistance and fire resistance on it. Um, just use these slots to fill whatever your resists are, that are missing. Here we want to use the Spider Silk Sash for poison resistance and cold resistance. And absolute key to the build is that you have mana gained on potion use. Ideally a T7. If you can't get a T7, a T4, a T5 will work. Um, the rest of our belt, we want increased chance to find potions because mana is run by our potions. And we want to increase poison damage, hybrid health, and then fill in whatever resist you're missing here. Our boots, Health Boons Mirage, these are important because they allow us to have near dodge cap while we are channeling Ghost Flame. They also give us ward as we're dodging and mana as we're dodging, and they come flat with in on them. They are very, very good boots. You absolutely want a pair of these. If you get some with LP on it, you want to slam in some intelligence and some hybrid health. These things are absolutely amazing for the build. Very common, easy to find as well. For our gloves, we're using Salt the Wound. This gives us increased damage over time, gives us physical and poison resistance, gives us physical penetration with our bleeds for crit multiplier, 
in physical penetration or poison penetration for our poisons with crit strike multiplier. And so this is a nice boost to our damage and our survivability. They're fairly easy to come by. And if you get some LP, we want to slam int and hybrid health in them again. Um, we're, we don't get a whole lot of crit multiplier in the build. We have it on a blessing here. You're going to have it on a relic here and you're going to get it on the gloves here. So it's probably netting you 30 to 40% penetration with your poisons and your bleeds. Very, very solid piece of gear though. For our relic, we are using a Putrid Souls Relic, which gives us poison resistance and ward per second. We do want a T7 level of Aura of Decay in here. If you can't get that, use a T5. If you don't have a T5, stick whatever relic you want in here. Um, the Erased Acolyte Relic is not a bad choice until you can get a T7 Aura of Decay, because just the more skills we have, the better for this build. Ideally, again, crit strike multiplier, resistances to fill the void, all resistances while channeling is a really good choice for helping pick up your resistances because you're going to be in ghost flame most of the time. Now, for our blessings, like I said, we go with granny emptiness of ash right here. If you don't have salt the wound, this doesn't do anything at all for you. You can actually take chance to ignite on hit. Ghost flame converts this to bleeds for you. You could also take ward decay threshold here. Spell damage leashed as health here, general health or dodge. There, there's a lot of flexibility in this blessing, but once you have salt the wound, you're going to want the crit strike multiplier here. Over here on Grand Grace of Water, we are taking the ward decay threshold and ward gained on potion use because more ward is always a good thing. Um, you can also take 60 to 90 mana if you don't have the ant to get to a comfortable level of mana. And you can also take 30 to 42 ward per second if you want a little bit more ward. And see so a little bit of flexibility in this one as well. Over on this one, you need chance to shred poison resistance on hit. Nothing else in here matters. Just run this stupid reign of dragons until you get chance to shred poison on hit. Um, and down here, same thing. You need armor while channeling. Um, it's, it's, it's absolute requirement. You gotta have it. Get it. Armor while channeling. Very, very strong. And then over here, increased armor. We've got to have it, farm it, get it. Doesn't matter how you do it. Um, with these two nodes and our Reaper form intelligence conversion to armor, when we're transformed and channeling, we're actually going to be running about 4,000 to 5,000 armor. That is almost 50% flat mitigation. Very strong, very good defenses. While we're channeling, we're going to have dodge chance of about 82 to 83 percent. So no problems dodging, no problems taking hits. It is super tanky. You're going to be getting somewhere between four and eight k ward, depending on where your gear level is. So as you're running around in your in-game gear, doing your 1,000 corruption monoliths. You'll have 50% armor mitigation, 85, uh, just call it 80% dodge rating, 10k health and life between between health and ward, and just a tremendous amount of mitigation from being channeling in ghost flame from our passive tree. Now, speaking of our passive trees, on acolyte. We really just want to go straight over here to the increased damage. We want to get all the int here, and we want to get this ward retention here. Nothing else in the tree matters. On Warlock, this is a very important tree. We want five out of eight here. You need this to get mana back while you're channeling around. Um, we want five out of eight here. You need this to get your mana pool high enough so as you find groups of potions and it tops you off, you actually have higher levels of mana. Um, we go ahead and take five out of five here. We take three out of five here. This gives us a huge amount of ward decay threshold. This gives us a huge amount of ward gain per second. And this gives us a huge amount of less damage taken and more damage to damned targets while channeling. We do need a source of damned in order to trigger this, the more damned while channeling. So there are lots of different sources of damned. I haven't included any in this build guide. 
but you're going to have to have some source of damned while channeling to get the more damage. But the less damage taken while channeling is very good. Remember, our ghost flame normally provides us with the damned while channeling, but because of our skill setup, it is no longer providing us with damned. Now, over here on the Lich Tree, we are taking 10 out of 10 intelligence, and then we're going to take 2 out of 10, or 2 out of 8 survival of the cruel. This, these two points I threw in here at the very end for some extra spell damage on each, but you're not taking this initially. You're going to go 10 here, 5 here to poison damage over time, 8 here to poison damage in duration, 8 here to 112% increased damage, 8 here to 16, and 1 here to get up to 5 out of 5 for 100% damage over time on recent kills. And then over here, Soul Maul for 5% general leech. Finally, we'll top it off with 10 out of 10 for 20 intelligence. Now, the build guide itself has a progression, and so you can see the order that we're taking these things in. Use this scroll bar down here to figure out where you are in your leveling so that you know what you should have. Now, for our idols, we are doing ward per second while channeling Ghost Flame and Poison Damage. Four times. Count them. Those are great idols. The increased poison damage, not as important as the ward per second while channeling Ghost Flame. Get the ward per second. Over here, we are taking mana efficiency with Ghost Flame and Health. Mana efficiency with Ghost Flame and Health, Armor and Health, Armor and Health. Mana efficiency while Ghost Flame is the most important one here. If you get the health, fantastic. If you don't, stick something on there. Get as close to 14% as you can get on here. Very important. Same thing, get as close to 100 as you can get on these things as well. These are your bread and butter for survivability, and these are your bread and butter for allowing you to get that survivability and keep it going. Now, for our skills, we are using R of Decay, Spirit Plague, Ghost Flame, Reaper Form, and Marrow Shards. Marrow Shards is being procced passively by Ghost Flame, so we're never actually casting this. We're going to drop all the way down the tree to mana gained by Marrow Orbs, increased chance for Marrow Orbs, and then increased healing with marrow orbs. This right down here is all that matters. I don't, I don't care about anything else in this whole tree. Get these points. Now, once you have these points, you can do whatever you want. Um, I went ahead and took Bones of the Follower because we don't have any minions for it to eat. I don't care if it eats minions. Um, hit damage against bleeding targets. They're all going to be bleeding, more hit damage. But our marrow shards, it's hitting for like 2, 3k. Our poisons are ticking for 10, 20, 30, 50k. Um, this is this is not truly relevant from a damage output. We're getting this for the health and the mana. That's the important part here. Um, I also went up here. This doesn't do anything for you because we're not hard casting it. A little bit more hit damage. Um, this one doesn't do anything because we don't have any minions. This one gives us just a little bit more physical leech for the hits coming from marrow shards. We are trying to maintain Reaper form all of the time, which is not too terribly difficult with this build. We love the move speed from Death Comes Quickly and Ghastly Flow. We love the damage from Reaper's Curse, Soul for Soul, Mistress of Decay. We love the increased leech from Harbinger of Blood. We love the armor for Intelligence Point. We love, love, love Bile Shroud. This gives us ward with our Bone Clamor and Poison Resistance to counteract the poison resistance penalty with Aura of Decay. This is a critical point. And then we love double potion health gain because we're using potions a lot, just more health. Coming over to Ghost Flame. Um, Ghost Flame is our primary movement and our primary uh, secondary damage ability. And so for Ghost Flame, we want three out of four dodge. You don't need four out of four. Three out of four will cap you with the boots. We want channel cost minus 70%, and then we're going to move over here for move speed while channeling. This allows us to move around while we're channeling Ghost Flame, and this gives us more move speed while channeling Ghost Flame. We also take Fiery Desecration, which causes Ghost Flame to deal damage in a circle. This is primarily for bosses. It is really hard to use Ghost Flame and target the boss as you're dodging things, and this just allows Ghost Flame to hit the boss as long as you're near him without being worried about where you're facing. 
over here we pick up ignite and damn chance per second we go ahead and convert that all over to bleeds per second and then we automatically trigger our marrow shards at a rate of two per second or one per second against a single target while we're channeling ghost flame and then we take this one down here for ignite and damned duration um, per intelligence point so that any ignite or damned that we have on our gear will get a little bit longer duration. I don't know if that converts to a bleed increased duration up here. Probably something we should take. Now, over here, we do take Spirit Plague. Spirit Plague is crucial for three things. Number one, we want endless decay down here. We, plague is nice. Poison penetration is plague is nice. Plague is a little bit more damage. This scales our poison damage very, very quickly whenever we're hitting spirit plague. We also like pestilence for increased global damage over time as we're hitting things with spirit plague. And we want to apply stacks of poison and stacks of bleed with our spirit plague. This allows spirit plague to spread a little bit more quickly from different passive ways that we hit our target. And then this gives us a little bit more mana gain as we're playing the game. Spirit Plague is not going to kill a lot of stuff, but when it does, that six more mana just adds up. Aura of Decay is our primary source of damage. Aura of Decay is going to be applying four poisons per second to anything in our Aura of Decay. Our poison duration after increases is about four seconds. So that is a very quickly stacking amount of poison from Aura of Decay just being in the Aura. While targets are inside of our Aura of Decay, they also receive 15% enemy poison resistance penalty and 100 and up to 63% poison resistance penalty per imp. This is also what we need to counteract over here because this applies to us as well. And otherwise, our poisons would kill us if we didn't have the Reaper Forms Bile Shroud over here. Now, Poison Bolt also inflicts two stacks of poison to the target and happens every see, three seconds divided by... Three, I, I can't I can't use my calculator up so three seconds divided by four is gonna be every 0.75 seconds. So this poison bolt is going off every 0.75 seconds with our uh, poison bolt frequency. And so we're getting two stacks of poison from every poison bolt every 0.75 seconds, which is netting us across four seconds another 10 stacks of poison, just passively from our Aura of Decay. And we do want area of Aura of Decay to be large because we want things to be in it more often than they're not. Um, we do have Aura of Decay as a chance to inflict Plague because Plague is just more damage. And then we do want Aura of Decay can emit Poison Novas whenever it kills a target because that's just going to spread our poisons more prolific prolifically for clearing instances. Uh, for survivability, we take absence of life, so we have some passive healing. This helps us whenever we're low on life from our Reaper form and helps us to counteract some of the poison damage we're taking. We do take increased ailment frequency, and then we take one point until the bone to get over to putrid bombs. So we have more bombs going off, creating more poisons and killing more things. Now, Aura of Decay has two things that will trigger poisons. There's a trail that you leave behind and an Aura of Decay around you. And so things behind you will die, things in front of you will die, and things around you will die. Now, from a DPS perspective, we're going to go back and forth between Spirit Plague and Ghost Plague against single targets that are big, like bosses. You want to drop five, six stacks of Spirit Plague on them, and then channel Ghost Flame for a few seconds, and then go back to five, six stacks of Spirit Plague, and then channel Ghost Flame for a few seconds. We're doing this to keep up our poisons and our bleeds to give us some passive managing time between 
uh, spamming spirit plague and ghost flame and to keep up stacks of our pestilence and stacks of our endless decay so that those benefit the damage and dots from our ghost flame as well. Now the the whole build itself should be pushing any level of corruption that you need it to push. Scaling is going to be entirely dependent on your gear and getting some of these uh, LP implicit slammed into your gear. Survivability is top notch. We shouldn't have any problems pushing arenas. It is a great overall build. The only place that it struggles is in bosses. And it's not that it's struggling to kill the boss because you should have no problems killing the boss. But it's learning the management of the health potions and the mana and the time down and making sure you have ghost flame up when you're standing in a boss mechanic and making sure that you're using spirit plague while you're moving around and just getting a general feel for the build. But in monoliths and echoes and arenas and dungeons and everything else, it just melts everything. Uh, if you have any questions over the build, hit me up in the comments, come visit me on Twitch. I stream every day, five to 10 hours a day. And so I'm, I'm always available to answer questions. As you're leveling the build, if you have questions, what can I do here? What can I do there? I'm glad to help out. You shouldn't have any problems. Leveling is really turn on aura of decay, spirit play things and everything just melts away. It's really straightforward. Um, but if you do have any struggles, let me know. I'm absolutely happy to answer questions. And as always, like, subscribe, follow. These are free activities that mean a lot to content creators. And so whoever you're watching, make sure that you're giving them your likes, your follows, your subscribes. I appreciate it. They appreciate it. It's how we continue to do these kind of things. Thank you very much for watching and y'all have an absolutely wonderful day.